and I'm doing a video on the Electronics Learning Lab from Radio Shack. And this is my lessons learned video, uh, what I have learned or enjoyed or didn't enjoy from workbook one, because if you've seen the last video, we've completed this book. But there is another workbook, a workbook two, on um, digital logic projects that I'll crack open shortly and start start learning um, that stuff and making videos. So I believe I had an intro video that talked about you know why why I got this unit or why I asked for it for a present and so forth and and then my wife got it for me best present ever by the way and um, it was because I got involved in ham radio a couple years ago and I realized you know I should probably know some more electronics than I do my knowledge was pretty limited and my knowledge of basic electronics was pretty much from high school which for me was over 20 years ago and so I knew the concepts of you know resistors capacitors uh, breadboards. I didn't really know anything about transistors. The only integrated circuit that I was familiar with was the 555 chip because that's a pretty famous one, well, very well known. But I didn't know all the intricacies of resistors, capacitors, and so forth. So it was very good to know all that stuff. And um, this board itself, I mean, I was pretty familiar with, again, the ideas of potentiometers, LEDs, um, not so much transformers or relays, buzzer, speaker, meters I was familiar with, photo transistor I was actually familiar with. Um, but so, so the first um, circuits in here, you know, that really go over resistors and capacitors, for me a lot of that was review, but again, it was review from 20 years ago. Or, you know, 50, uh, I'm sorry, 20, 19, 18 years ago when was in class in school and we would make this type of stuff in a science class or when I just you know basically playing with my friends who were really into this stuff who knew this stuff very well and we would we would go to Radio Shack and go through the drawers and get breadboards and get different wires and parts and make make kind of fun stuff okay so let's um, well first of all I noticed that I my first video in this playlist was from March 30th 2015 so from there till today, that's, um, I, let's see, I did the calculation here. I'm looking at a spreadsheet, 154 days. And in that time, in my playlist, there's about 135 or so videos. Subtract a couple off from that because there's like an introductory video. There's a video where I correct a mistake that a viewer found. And then another video where I think I just talk about circuits or something, integrated circuits. So just say 132 videos, 132 circuits. So, and I was, I was moving pretty fast. I would try to do, you know, at least one a day or try to do several some days if I slack the last couple days. So I think if you're getting this for someone, they could easily stretch it out easily, I think, a year because there's lots of... Um, there's lots of circuits in here, for one thing, and then they, they give lots of suggestions on how to modify the circuit, which I like. Um, some circuits have, like, several ways you could modify it. So I think you could stretch out one circuit sometimes to be, like, th three or four circuits sometimes. Like, for example, if, um, you know, one circuit that makes some sound effect, it uses a certain um, capacitor. But maybe if you add uh, a capacitor with higher microfarad value, it would make a different sound effect. And then maybe if you added a different resistor, it would make a different sound effect, and so forth, for example. So, or if you're, if you're doing something that is connected to the phototransistor, maybe instead you could connect it to the meter, or connect it to the speaker, or you know you could you can change it up a lot of different ways um so that is great now the book itself i think going through was really um let me just flip through real quick so i noticed a kind of a pattern as i got towards the end of the book i would find more and more errors so i think that's a flaw of the book maybe towards the end they wanted to finish it up i don't know <laughs> But towards the end, 
I started to find a lot more errors. Start of the book, middle of the book, not a lot of errors. Let me find some examples if I can real quick. Let's see. Well, there's one right there. Things that are labeled in, oh, here's one. See, they missed these resistors. This one should be here. They missed a couple capacitors. Um, this one, they missed a transistor here. Now, most all the time, I will give them 100% credit that, or I'll say 99% credit, that almost all the time, maybe all the time, these actual diagrams are correct. So if you're missing a piece, if you're missing the parts list, you know, just look in, look in the diagram and um, you'll, you will find it. So see here's like C1, C2, but there's a C4 and a C5. If you look over here, there's C4, right? There's C3, C1, let's see, a C5 in there? Do, do, do. Yeah, C5 right there. So the diagram is almost always correct. So if you ever, there's a place where you're missing pieces, just look at the diagram. But anyways, I noticed kind of after they show transistors, that starts to get a little filled with errors. Let's see if I can find another one for you real quick. Here's a small one, and I mentioned these in my videos. You know, this circuit here, it needs, tw if you count the number of blue wires, it needs 12 of them. But in your, in this, um, in this uh, supply box, you only have 10 blue ones, right? Oop. You only have 10 blue, which is not a big deal. Yellow's longer, you just use two yellows. But I'm just saying that's just an example of, you know, kind of some errors. Here's some more. These ones, are, I think, are switched around. Yeah, because it says C1 across J2 and K2, so it doesn't tell you about the polarity, the positive and negative. So this one should be C1, this one should be C2. You see? So there's just lots of stuff like that where it's um, they have something flipped around or they're just missing resistors or capacitors completely. And I just noticed, just my observation, as the book went on, those issues increased. But like I said, the solution is just to pay attention to the, the diagram and you should be good to go. Um, there was only, let's see, from memory, well there was one circuit for sure I just couldn't get to work with the diagram. Um, it was a recent circuit, um, I forget off the top of my head, but it was one circuit maybe like four or five circuits ago that I just couldn't get it to work. So I found a similar circuit, I looked online, I just kind of figured it out myself. There's a combination of all those things and I got it to work. So, and I think in the past there may have been one more that I had some trouble with, but I ended up getting it to work. So I think overall in this workbook out of the 130 some circuits that I did, there was only one, one circuit that I just couldn't get to work as um, as diagrammed and listed in the book. So I think that's pretty good. Okay. Um, I was looking at some reviews online and people said they just couldn't stand the font. Which to me seems a little petty. I don't... I mean, I think the font's pretty cool. I don't find it that hard to read. Is, is this hard to read? I don't find it hard to read. Anyways, I thought that was interesting. Okay, so this is my kind of lessons learned. I would say... I refreshed my memory, uh, my knowledge of basic electronics, so I learned um, a lot more intricacies of resistors and capacitors, for sure. Um, transistor knowledge was pretty much new. The integrated circuit knowledge was all, pretty much all new. I mean, I knew, I knew about the 555 chip. I had used that in the past for something, for some school project, and again, I don't remember the, the details, that was a long time ago. Let me see if I can find the, the section in the book here. It talks about the circuits, the integrated circuits. So, yeah, all the integrated circuit knowledge is pretty much new. 
Okay, yeah, so for example, the voltage regulator, that's totally new. Audio power amplifier, totally new. Op amp, totally new. Quad op amp, quad comparator. The 555 timer was the only one that I knew a little bit about. You know, I think in the, in the past, um, we probably used it to make an LED flash. You know, kind of like the basic uh, thing you would do. But all the other ones were new. So, um, anyways, so I think the book could, of the things in the book, just looking through the table of contents here, I think they could have done more projects with the LEDs, the console LEDs, I mean, and the... Um, the seven segment display there was only like one or two circuits they were you know pretty basic I think they could have done more with that um, same thing with like the Zener diodes I don't think they really did enough with that um, I think they maybe could have explained the relay a little bit more I didn't I don't feel like you know if you ask me to explain a relay I can kind of explain it but I don't really feel like I have as much knowledge as about like a resistor, for example. Um, I thought the items with the photo, the, the, the um, circuits that they did with the photo transistor um, were awesome. I love them. Um, people, in my, people in my family that were playing with them really enjoyed them. So the photo transistor ones are cool. I, I really like the photo transistor ones, as well as I think in general they did a very good job with the sound effect ones. Some of the sound effect claims they made, I think, were a little bit reaching. Like, this is a, a you know, a siren. Well, it kind of sounds like a siren, but not really. Or this sounds like a drum synthesizer. It's like, mmm, kind of. But other ones were better than I thought. Were better than they advertised. So, there were some sounds that I, I just didn't expect. They actually surprised me. How, how, how cool the sounds were. Um... Let's see, is there anything else? Looking at these table of contents real quick. Um, you know, that's probably it. I think I'll probably stop there with my overview of book one, now that I've finished book one. And um, But please stick around, we still have workbook two. And like I said, that one is on digital logic projects. So we, we're going to definitely use more of the, um, obviously our knowledge of all this stuff, but more emphasis on the circuits, integrated circuits, uh, to do some of this digital logic. Okay, so stick around and I'm going to start doing circuits from workbook two. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.